Mathematica provides a very deep level of integration between its symbolic processing language and the kinds of objects that you can display and interact with on the screen. So what do I mean by deep integration? Let's start with a simple example, the um, expand function, which expands polynomials. So in this case, we'll expand x plus 1, uh, let's say, to the fifth power. Um, if we evaluate that, sure enough, we get a nicely expanded polynomial. So the question is, what exactly can we use as the variable name in this example? Here we've used x. That's obviously a very common variable name. Uh, if we copy this down, we can easily replace x with, let's say, a Greek letter, um, alpha maybe, uh, using our little input syntax. Now we have alpha expanded. That's nice, um, but not exactly earth-shattering. Supposing we wanted to instead use, let's say, uh, a plot. Let's make a simple plot of sine of x and evaluate that. And suppose we wanted to use that plot as the variable name. So let's copy, paste, and now copy the plot, copy that, and paste it in where we had the variable. So Mathematica anticipates the notion of people using plots as part of input, and it automatically shrinks it down so that it doesn't look completely out of place when it's used in line and functional notation like that. And now we'll evaluate. And sure enough, uh, Mathematica was perp perfectly happy uh, to use a picture of a plot as a variable name. And if you think about it, the, the variable x is just a picture. It looks sort of like a cross. And uh, in, in a truly deeply integrated system like Mathematica, there is literally no difference in the internal implementation between using a picture that looks like an x versus a picture that looks like a plot. Um, and we can, you know, we can take this a little farther. So let's make a, another object that we can use. Let's say a slider connected to the variable um, uh, a. We better not use x there. So we'll make a slider. This is now an object that we can click on. And let's now uh, get our input expression again. Copy that, paste it down. Now copy the slider and paste over the plot. So we now have a polynomial in the slider as opposed to an x. And sure enough, it expands it out. And of course, because these are all linked to the same variable x, when we drag one around, they all move because they're all referring to the same variable. Um, and that works whether we drag the input or the output. Um, let's go a little farther. Uh, I'm going to copy from another notebook a piece of code. It's a little bit longer than you'd want to type. Um, so this is uh, code that produces as output an interactive little bouncing application. It uh, has the property that if you click on it anywhere, uh, balls start falling. Um, and they kind of keep jiggling there. Now, let's go back to our polynomial. Copy that. Paste it here. And now let's take this picture of this program and replace the slider with that. Again, it got smaller automatically. Um, and uh, let's see. So I'm going to click in it, and then right after clicking in it, I'll evaluate so that we have uh, some initial balls up here to start with when we do the evaluation. And sure enough, um, it expanded the polynomial and made five separate copies. And each of these is now an independent copy. Um, so let's just think about what this program actually just did. So we have a running program, an applet, if you will, that you can click on that interacts with the mouse that's continuously processing and updating itself. And we use that as the name of a variable in a polynomial expansion. The system took the running application with its current internal program state, namely where the, you know, where the balls are and what state they are and bouncing. It took that and serialized it into a freeze-dried representation, which it sent off to be used as the variable name. That was then processed through an arbitrary symbolic computation and produced as output 
five replicas of that running program in which the internal program state had been replicated five times and then instantiated those applets, if you will, on the screen and they continued running. And because of the way it was set up, they have separate internal variables. Um, so the program state is separate and you can click on each one separately and get different balls bouncing. Um, this is, for lack of a better word, remarkable. 